Hello, everybody. Um, this is Alice from Jove, and welcome to our session, uh, Engaging Students with Digital Libraries. Now, we are a little bit in advance compared to when we were planning to start, one minute. So we will allow a couple of minutes um, to make sure that everybody is able to join, connect, do anything they would like to do in the meantime, grab a glass of water. Oh, I can see a lot of people already coming in, which is fantastic. So while we wait for the first couple of minutes to um, get on, I would like to just run through the classic housekeeping elements of a webinar. So as you can see, well, we're all familiar with Zoom by now. Uh, there is a chat box that you can use to interact with other people, um, just to leave your comments or say anything you would like to say. Uh, but there's also a Q&A box, and that's where you will be able to ask your questions or add anything that you would like to add and make sure that uh, by the end of this session, when we get to the Q&A moment, we have some fit for thought and our speaker, our guest speaker for today will be able to answer those questions questions. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our guest speaker, Dr. Leo Appleton from the University of Sheffield. And thanks to all of those, by the way, who are uh, already writing in the chat box. It's really nice to see you all. So Dr. Appleton is a person who's had lots of experience with libraries because he's worked in management positions at different libraries over the course of his career. And now he is teaching um, primarily in MA librarianship studies and information services. So he's specialized over time in some of the topics that librarians interact with uh, on a regular basis, one of which we will be discussing today. And um, over time, he's also written a few papers. He's contributed to different publications as a thought leader and as an academic. So today we are talking about engagement. It's something that people discuss continuously. It's part of every librarian's KPIs when you have to set up uh, new strategies for the for the year, for the academic year, and you think, okay, one of them has to be how do we engage with the students? How do we find new ways? And libraries have changed over time. It's not just physical libraries that we interact with. Now there's digital. There have been digital libraries for quite some time. Even pre-pandemic, there used to be digital libraries already. It's something that um, got into the technology world quite quickly. So today we're trying not only to bridge the gap between these two, but to discuss different strategies and also maybe reflect upon what is engagement after all. So we have Leo here to talk us through some examples and some concepts that he's studied and developed over time. And I would like to leave the floor to him. Thanks, Leo. Uh, thank you very much, Alice. Can, can you hear me and see my screen, see my presentation? I can hear you and I can see your presentation perfectly. Great. So I shall assume that everybody who's present can do the same, can see me, hear me and see my see my slides. So thank you very much um, for inviting me to talk today um, about uh, student engagement. I'll say a little bit more about what I'm what I'm going to be um, kind of covering in the session. Um, but my my brief was really to uh, kind of present some, I don't know, be, be thought provoking around student engagement um, in libraries and with a kind of point of view of what do we do in a, in a physical library setting and a digital library setting, and then leave it open so that we can have some discussion. So uh, let me just first recap who I am, and that was a wonderful introduction from Alice, so thank you very much. Um, but um, yes, I am Leo. I am an academic at the Information School at the University of Sheffield, where I've been the programme coordinator for our librarianship MA, um, and I also do a lot of teaching on uh, both that MA and the MA Distance Learning Library and Information Service Management. But I've only been in this role for four years, not even quite four years yet, Prior to that, I was a practicing library and information professional, um, and I've held uh, leadership posts at um, some university libraries in the UK, Goldsmiths, University of London, University of the Arts, London, and Liverpool John Moores University. I've been, I've held director of library services positions in those institutions. I've been a subject liaison librarian for health and midwifery. I've been a learning resources manager in some further education colleges. And a long, long time ago, I started out as a cataloger um, in the university library at the, the University of Liverpool before 
moving on to become a, a bibliographic services manager sort of I've had quite a lot of roles in academic libraries um and made a, made a, a, a whole career out of uh, being an academic librarian so I do come to you as a practitioner as well as an academic and Alice referred to me as a, a thought leader which is very nice I'm not sure I, I do lead in, in in that respect but hopefully I will give you some food for thought during the course of this presentation um, I've entitled it Engaging Higher Education Students in Physical and Digital Library Environments. So we all want this to be all about uh, student engagement, if you like. And I'm a kind of um, but I'll be upfront about this. There's not that much about engaging students in digital library environments in this presentation because I want this to kind of spark some thought about how, how we might um, use what we do in the physical setting um, in more of a digital setting. But I will I will present some ideas and some suggestions around that um, as we go on. So the in terms of an overview of what I'm going to cover, I'm only going to talk for 20, 30 minutes and then hopefully we'll spend the second half um, having some discussion. Um, I'm going to slightly academicize student engagement, talk about what do we mean by student engagement and student engagement within higher education. I want to kind of separate um, student engagement from how we interact with students to how we want, we get students to engage with learning because as academic librarians um, we need to we need to balance both actually just general interaction with students and how we engage students in our teaching and learning activities and that for me is where we could we would be talking about student engagement with academic libraries um, and then I've, I'm I'll going to to go a little bit more granular, talk about different ways that students engage with learning or we engage with students in the learning environment, how we engage through partnership and collaboration, how important it is to, to harness the student voice in what we do. And then at the end, I'm going to try and bring it all together by sharing with you some student engagement initiatives that I was fortunate enough to be a part of during my um, kind of professional career in, in academic libraries. So just some propositions, just just kind of bear with me here and just consider these particular propositions. If we continuously observe how students use our libraries and library services, we'll be able to continuously improve them and deliver what our students require and expect. So we can engage with students simply by watching them in our library environments. Second proposition, if we engage with our students and keep asking them what they want in the library and from our library services, we'll be able to keep on responding and improving our services. So as well as watching what students do, observing what students do in our environments, um, we should also or potentially a different approach would be to ask them um, what it is that they want from us and the third proposition there being professional and striving for excellence in service delivery means that we'll always be delivering an excellent student experience so that's kind of stepping aside but 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 potentially putting the students at the heart of what we do and striving to do the very best possibly from our own perspective but that could also um that could also mean talking to students observing students and i've just put these propositions up because um i want I'm, i won't put them back up at the end but there might be something you, you want to think about um after we've had our discussions around student engagement but i'd say we probably as library practitioners do all three of these um observe ask and also through wanting to deliver the very best strive for excellence and you can bring into that things like kite marks um customer service excellence um kind of attainment that you would have in order to uh, kind of measure your professionalism and excellence as a library service so what do we actually mean by student engagement i'd like to think in academic libraries we know what we mean by student engagement, but have you ever stepped outside your library environment and thought about it more holistically? How do students engage in their student environment in general? So this is how your university or college that you work at might consider student engagement, that, that just that concept of student engagement. So engaging students with their learning and attainment. And this is something I'm really conscious of now as a teacher. When I talk about students engagement, it's about how do I engage my students in their teaching? teaching and learning activities, not necessarily anything to do with the, the, the academic library. 
You could always also have engagement with respect to partnership and collaboration. And again, this, this is, that's a space where you might be familiar as academic librarians. Similarly, from a university, a step back perspective, engaging students in kind of major projects or in design projects or in kind of policy making, stra strategic decisions, etc. Student voice and opinion is another kind of widely touted um, kind of element of student engagement. So wanting to get the students' perceptions and perspectives into the things that we do. And then there are also lots of more granular things that we talk about in student engagement when we talk about techniques and methods for student engagement. So it could be surveys, it would be a classic one of engaging students, or even a comment slip um, or a complaints form. All of those are, are techniques and methods for student engagement. But I'm going to talk a lot more about that um, in due course. Because all these four things, probably sound quite familiar to you and that these are what your university leadership and administrators will be thinking about when they talk about students engagement um, but we do student engagement in those ways in academic libraries as well and this is a quotation from a, um, a literature review that I wrote for the new review of academic librarianship it's sorry it's not a quotation it's a list of three bullet points but it's it's what I what I was and I put a reference at the end um, but it does contextualize um, what we do in academic, academic libraries quite prolifically with regards to student engagement. And there are three broad contexts, engagement in forming partnerships between students and librarians, engagement through seeking student voice and opinion about our library services and facilities, and engagement in learning in the library and through library instruction. So we as academic librarians are wanting to deliver the very best services. So we want to engage through those partnerships with students. We want to engage through asking students how they feel and what they want and what they expect. But we're also involved in our own teaching and learning around information literacy, digital literacy, academic study skills etc so we want to actually see engagement through our students and with our students in the classroom but also in our digital learning environments as well so that's where what how we engage physically should mirror or should impact on how we engage digitally as well so just a couple more slides where I'm just going to slightly, not kind of again contextualise student engagement in higher education. I've, I've called this slide student engagement in their higher education, um, because starting at, at starting as a general student at university level, um, your experience of the university is your student experience, whether it's in the library or in the classroom or in the faculty or in the refectory. Um, so student engagement in higher education is active across all, all aspects of university college life. Um, partly has resulted from the, I'd say, global commodification of higher education, so the need to position students so that they have a greater influence on their or institution, the institution to which they're paying a lot of money for their higher education. Um, and there's a, an element of accountability, there's an expectation of universities to deliver a more student-centred higher education because of the fi financial transactions that take place. But I appreciate I'm talking to people from um, all over the world, and I come at this from a, a fairly UK perspective, but I think some of this is transferable. So this is quite an old reference from our own uh, kind of government body, Department for Business Innovation and Skills, um, in a paper around or papers where they discuss student engagement and putting putting the student at the heart of the university experience. Um, from a more academic perspective, Ku says that student engagement is the time and effort that students devote to activities that are empirically linked to desired outcomes and what institutions do to induce students to participate in these activities. That's quite wordy. Um, uh, but I think I think it encapsulates what I've been saying about um us taking the time and effort to engage with students uh, with desired outcomes, um, but also the time and effort and the acknowledgement of the time and effort that students take to engage with activities within their higher education institution, whether that's engagement in the classroom or how they engage with support services such as the library, such as academic skills, etc. So another scholar, uh, Kehu, 
says that student engagement with their learning and development, so this is their learning and development doesn't just happen in the classroom, as we know, it happens in the library environment, it happens in the academic skills centre, it can happen in the career centre, but students tend to engage um, at different levels, so it can be a behavioural engagement, um, an emotional engagement, cognitive, psychological, social, cultural. Students are here to learn, they're in our institutions to learn, so some of that they do in the libraries but we need to be aware of what the literature is saying in general about engagement with teaching and learning because when a student is learning at the university that's their student experience whether it's in the classroom the library a career center when a student is being taught by teachers or by yourselves as teacher librarians that is their student experience and when a student is interacting with the library that is also their student experience so i think we we can observe and encourage engagement at all those different levels that I've suggested on the screens there. So just some rhetorical questions to get you to think a little bit about uh, what engaging with the library actually means. And what if we step back and ask the following questions? How do your students engage with you as academic librarians and academic libraries? How do they use the library to achieve their desired um, educational outcomes? How do they engage with learning? What do they actually do in the library and through your services, facilities and resources? So it's, that's what behaviourally, what do students do? But also, what do you do to engage your students? How do you encourage effective uses of your usage of your library by students in order to enable them to achieve their desired outcomes? And you do that through um, being proactive, striving for excellence. How do you enable effective learning in your library? How are the spaces is set up? How are the digital platforms set up? How is the collection organised? What are the skill sessions that you put on? So you're doing things to engage with your students in the same way that, that your students um, need to engage with the library service as well. So for me, this this is quite a really simple concept. It's about it's about putting the students at the heart of everything that we do as academic librarians. I'm just going to move on at the end of coming to the end of the kind of slightly academic wordy bit, but a couple of um, library commentators, academic librarian uh, scholars, um, who've, who've I suppose provided what I'm going to call two semi-theoretical frameworks to come out of academic library practice. The first one is by Tim Schlack, and the references for all of these are at the end. Um, talks about student engagement at different levels from, from his observations, the students, student learning, so students actively engage with learning opportunities in the library, um, citizenship and service-based learning, so he regards that as engagement with facilities and resources. So using the facilities and resources that you're making available in your library. Then he talks about technology and programmatic learning experiences. So re-engagement um, through technology and digital. So potentially taking what you know or what the student knows and understands of the physical library, but re-engaging with it in a digital sense and you know, making digital library services available is our way of doing that. And then there's relational engagement. So intentional customer service relationship building. So that could be through your excellent customer service work, your liaison work with faculty. Um, and similarly, it could link into your work around student learning as well. And Pitaway, the Sarah Pitaway's article, um, asks a really interesting question when she talks about student engagement. What does an engaged student look like as opposed to a disengaged student? And that's something uh, to give some food, you know, some thought to um, if we would talk about what's a disengaged student. Is it someone who simply doesn't use the library, doesn't know how to use the library, isn't encouraged to use the library? Um, and she also suggests that academic libraries can create very favourable conditions to facilitate the likelihood of more engagement behaviours. And I think that, again, that's something that's probably resonates with you as uh, li academic library practitioners, the things you do to make the student experience in your library the very best it can be. So I do want to talk about engagement 
with learning a bit more because I, I think that this is a, 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 a you know a significant space for academic librarians and we're being brought together here today by Jove who is a the you know a, a library resource an academic library resource something that we would use in our teaching and learning um, beyond the library potentially and we are you know, I'm going to make an assumption here that some of you or all of you are or have been involved in information literacy teaching that you're potentially active or encourage active learning in both physical and digital environments that you, you probably don't do didactic teaching but um, do more constructivist approaches uh, but again in both physical and, and digital environments you may use problem-based learning approaches flip classroom approaches you may use gamification um, so th those those three points may not be something that you're overly familiar with but certainly in, in within a from a pedagogic position your universities will be encouraging these different types of learning in order that students engage with their learning you may well be involved in in gamifying your your information literacy but it might also be um encouraging students to reflect on um their library activity and that would be again uh, you, you, your role in engaging with learning or it might be you're encouraging peer-to-peer -peer learning either as librarians or as teachers um, but peer-to-peer -peer learning through students within within your library environments or your classroom environments. So what I'm starting to do here is, is just present to you the different sections of that literature review um, that I mentioned at the beginning of the session. So engagement with learning was very much the first part of that. Then I talk go on to talk about partnership and collaboration. And here's where here's somewhere where I think libraries are really good at. It's not just libraries, other other areas of your um university environments will do partnership and collaboration um, but it's about seeing your students as co-collaborators co-creators or co-producers of what you do um, and that can be in the planning and development processes and um, so it can be in forming policy it can be in the physical design of your library it can be in the uh, the design and usability of your web platforms of your digital resources um, it can be being involved in, in in strategic planning initiatives, but it's ultimately about removing what I would say were old school power relationships between we as the employees of the institution and students as the customers in institution. Talk about students and customers, whole other debate, but ultimately what I'm, what I'm suggesting here is we 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 collaborate, co-create, and co-produce through removing those power dynamics, and. In my experience, working with students as peers and as equals leads to far more meaningful engagement um, and students empowered to influence their library services. And for me, that's not a bad place for students to be in. Um, it also encourages a transferable employability, life skills as well, um, if, if they, they're encouraged to operate in that kind of en environment. So for me, relationships with students, communications and continual dialogue as both as an academic and also as a librarian are really important um, for student engagement to just to happen in the first place. And then a little bit about student voice, what I've just labeled student voice, because capturing the student voice um, I'll talk about student voice. It's, it feels quite consumerist and it's um, associated with marketization. So kind of gathering customer insight or opinion, uh, but it's still a form of engagement and it can help us in terms of asking our students what it is they want. But we can use the concept of student voice more meaningfully now because it can also mean we can target particular user groups within the library. So, for example, you may just want to target how your postgraduate researchers use your library or are there um, under represented marginalized groups of students who you want to uh, particularly promote resources to or engage with so there's lots of ways of capturing student voice um traditionally uh, it was done uh, hopefully this is the only thing that you would do but traditionally you might have a library survey in paper form or online but I think student voice now is becoming more dialogic and bespoke, so you're able to target specific groups and you can use um, different forms of interview, you can use focus groups, you can use different ways of, of having dialogue and discussions with people. Um, actually bringing students into your kind of staff quota through 
deliberately employing students or having students internships, not just to make up the numbers of the staff, but with a potential strategic objective of capturing student feedback through, through their involvement and engagement with the library in a paid situation. You can have uh, student representation. Should, you should be having student representation on project teams, project boards, um, different committees within the library, um, and certainly within the university. You can have student ambassadors who you either pay or are on a volunteer basis uh, to champion the library and help with particular library uh, actions and um, activities. And then there's ethnography and space planning, so things like user experience, uh, which I might talk a little bit about more in a moment. But they're just a few. That's not that's not an exhaustive list, but there's some of the things I um, review the literature on in, in the literature review that I, I mentioned before and do make reference to at the end. And what I want to do now, um, kind of almost before um yeah opening it up for discussion i've got a few more slides is just very quickly tell you about some what were really successful student engagement initiatives at three of my former places of work so i'm going to talk briefly about a we said we did campaign that i worked with the president and the exact team of the student union in at uh, liverpool john moore's university then uh, there was a customer service excellence initiative um, at University of the Arts London and another further student engagement initiative at Goldsmiths that I just felt um, I've got this kind of practical real life experience of these student engagement initiatives, um, which should, there may be something in there for you to take away. Uh, a couple of these are written up, so you, you don't have to take it off of me uh, just now. So very quickly, we said we did was was a very concerted effort. It's a lot, some time ago, it's over 10 years ago now, um, where it was with an intentional partnership approach. We'd never done it before, but to bring students on board uh, through, through our student union um, in some particular uh, specific uh, library projects. So that having student voice on the new library management system project and the new discovery layer project was really important. Um, we also, as a university, ran a student experience review project called SERIG, which stands for Student Experience Review In Implementation Group. Um, and we had student representation on this particular programme of projects, which actually completely changed the way that we operated as libraries. So our libraries became, became library and student support centres and all student administration, student finance, uh, student transactions such as um, submitting assignments, etc., all took place in the library space along with kind of triage around welfare and careers appointments. So it really transformed this, partic this particular student representation, student engagements, transformed the way in which we did libraries. And it sustained beyond these projects. It wasn't just about having representation on these projects and, and programmes. Um, it then sustained into regular meetings between the student union colleagues and library management team. Um, and we also established a library and learning resources centre critical friends group, which extended beyond the student union. Um, and we would participate in a student union led better university forum where we would quite often talk with students about our library services. Now, I I am conscious that I am talking to an international audience and you don't all have student unions in your respective higher education systems. Um, so just very quickly and in brief, um, it, all UK higher education institutions the student body is represented by the student union and it operates uh, like a trade union but affiliated to that particular university. Um, so that was, I said these were just brief. So, um, at the University of the Arts London, we we achieved a kite mark called Customer Service Excellence, which was um, quite a big deal for us because the University of the Arts London is made up of six separate colleges dispersed around London. And I used the Customer Service Excellence kite mark uh, to join up the services. There was a, a kind of inconsistent approach of delivering services. Um, so using that kite mark as a quality, quality kite mark, it helped us to improve and develop services um, and strive for excellence. So this is a, in those propositions I told you, shared with you at the beginning, this is the third one where we strive for excellence. And by striving for excellence, we'll be delivering the services that, that students want. 
because we involved lots of student focus groups in this. We involved students in training and developing library staff. We involved students in um, policy development um, and, de and developing service standards and uh, kind of customer charters and things like that. And also involving students in developing our performance indicators. So there was a lot, a lot of joining up of, of, of service provision. Um, and we could only achieve that through bringing our students on board and getting their thoughts, getting their inputs into that. So we involved a lot of students in those kind of decisions. Um, and then I've called this going beyond the academic library. At, whilst I was at Goldsmiths as director of library services, um, I led a another project using, partly due, due to customer service excellence, but to engage our students in training staff across the whole um, academic registry directorate. So it included student recruitment, student administration, library services, careers, student welfare, student services, etc. cetera. Um, but I worked very closely with um, students um, and in particular the, the uh, vice presidents of teaching and learning um, to create a staff development initiative um, which was led by the students and it basically it, it allowed our students to present a, a day in their life of um, what it was to be a student at Goldsmiths University of London. And this was a particularly big initiative because we, we stretch it out across the whole of, as I said, the academic registry. Um, and the focus was around the challenges and barriers to universities, um, sorry, challenges and barriers to being at university um, and it was students sharing those challenges and barriers and then us being able to work together uh, to come through them so not necessarily specifically about libraries this but it's just a, a, a good illustration of um, how to keep the dialogue going because it's those relationships with the student body that for me is key to successful engagement so you need to have people in your library service whose role it is to talk to students and that students feel that they are represented um, within the things that you kind of do and engage in so I'm just put those propositions back up now hopefully now I've just talked for 25 minutes um, these I don't know, they might have resonated with you at the beginning, but it might resonate with you more now. So continually observing students. So that's where we we might use ethnographic um, user experience type techniques. But asking students, having that dialogue with them is all important and being professional and striving for excellence. So using things like kite marks, but again, involving students and engaging students um, allows us to deliver the very best experience. So what does all of that look like for libraries if we were to go granular as i think i mentioned that before it can be a comment slip or a complaint slip it can be us observing students it can be us ob observing students moving across the library interactive teaching sessions interactions on social media student employment or um, internships we could do touchstone tours focus groups we can interview students we can ask students to get involved in usability testing of our systems we can set up student user groups we can write love letters and break up letters to the library to find out exactly what students feel about the library we can encourage students to reflect on how they use the library using reflective learning di diaries we can and champion or employ student ambassadors, get students represented on all the things that we do, consult students, um, consult on policy, get students involved in staff development initiatives in libraries. There are lots of little ways, some of these obviously bigger than others, but there are lots of little ways um, that we can get this uh, student engagement really happening. And for digital, because that's where I want this, because I think if if you've got experience in student engagement, a lot of it might have been in those physical environments. Um, but I've just put in a, a quotation from Donna Lanclos here, 2014, so 10 years ago, but where she suggested um, that higher education students post digital learning landscapes because digital permeates all of our learning and it's just understood by those who use it. So we could say our, our students in that respect, that when we ask library users to think about what they do with technology or how they use the web, they're often intrigued to find it difficult to disentangle this from their everyday learning practices. And I, I think that's quite significant because um, 
everything I've just talked about, which which could appear on the surface to be rather physically biased rather than rather than focused on the digital. Uh, but if you if you talk to students, and that's obviously one of my key messages, if you talk to students, they probably will share with you that actually the the blurring between their physical student experience and their digital experience is is um, kind of more and more extreme, I think, in terms of blurring the two together. They can't disentangle them. And bear in mind, this is 10 years ago. That's absolutely more the case now. So in terms of the 21st century digital user experience, um, I, I suppose my question to, to everyone here, if you want to get some discussion going, is how do we put the students at the heart of learning and development in that digital library setting? And I'm just going to very briefly, this is my final slide, share with you just some screen grabs I use to talk about how I deliver online learning, because I one of my master's programs is entirely delivered online to students all around the world. It's our MA in Library and Information Service Management. Um, and I have, um, I'm saying I, I've got, we've got a whole teaching team who run this. So we have a selection of modules um, with lots of resources and um, pre-recorded videos on Blackboard. So you get an idea of what one of our landing pages of one of our modules look like. We have weekly, um, live timetabled uh, lectures or seminars that we deliver, not dissimilar to this webinar that you're sitting in now, um, but with with kind of academic content um, and we we will put lots of digital activity into there we also use a lot of flipped learning so we will ask people to look at resources or watch videos before coming to the live lecture so that they can engage in in debate and uh, and discussion um, within the session we would encourage people to put cameras and microphones on or have some uh, synchronous text discussion in the chat features um, we would also have particular engagement activities in the session. So we put up digital whiteboards, um, encourage chat so that discussion can happen with the chat. And then we as teachers would interact with the content that they're sharing with us. And we also make huge use of asynchronous platforms. So this is just a screen grab from a a Google Spaces discussion that's happening outside of the class, but helps to inform students' learning and understanding for when they're in their uh, timetable classroom sessions. So as, as many of you will probably be involved in delivering learning and teaching through online platforms. Some of you may not have had the opportunity to do that. But, the, but what, what I would illustrate through this is um, students expect it um, and they're familiar with it and if we go back to Donna Lanclos's quote about students being able to finding it difficult to untangle physical and digital I think operating and learning in a digital learning environment is, is testament to that so I think you'll get the slides beyond this presentation and if you want to follow up any of those references um there they are the top two are the best um because they're by me um and i'm happy to um, answer any questions that you might have or we can start some discussion about any ideas you have about uh, engaging students in digital spaces thank you so much leo for this amazing presentation people have uh remain uh throughout the session I, I i can happily say i haven't seen a single person drop out throughout the session so it, it tells us it was really really insightful and interesting uh we've received a few questions already so i'm gonna start by asking a couple but i can already see that the q a box is populating further so please continue to do so please continue to ask your questions i would like to start um with something related to the last slide that you showed, you know, there were a few examples of how you've integrated different tools within Blackboard, for example. Uh, we know people from, you know, all over the world use completely different platforms, but they all have the same goal to bring different content in one space, right? And in my experience working with librarians, I can also see some people that I've worked with um, amongst the attendees. So hi, everyone. Um, one of the questions I got asked the most was, how important is it to have everything integrated in one place versus having a variety of different platforms? I ask this also because obviously Jove is a digital resource, so um, the videos can be integrated on Moodle, Blackboard, whatever you use, but how important is it in your experience to have this feature as a librarian? So, uh, well, my, my experience as a librarian would have been working with faculty teams or I suppose the old me working with the new me now as someone putting together um, virtual learning resources and programs curricula for for students and I think 
um, both as a librarian and now as a teacher, my answer would be it's very important, I think, I think to have uh, almost one, not one stop shops, but we, if we were to talk to students, they they want it as they don't want to be phased, they don't want to be overwhelmed. Um, so they we we almost need to whilst we did want to deliver quality, but we would also want to make it as easy as it, as as possible for students to engage. So there are different ways of of obviously embedding and and, and hyperlinking to different resources within a platform, but it, we we really strive for consistency across. Um, so any one module, twelve week module, has twelve similar looking on the surface weeks with with similar type content, pre recorded lectures, um, um, links to uh, video, lots lots of video resource, links to other interactive resources, links to reading. So quite different to when I was a student when the you you literally did have to go from pillar to post to find the resources and and, and capture the learning we do try we do put it in in make it make it as simple as possible um so I, I, I don't know whether that answers the question Alice but I think um part, part of that comes with we obviously that there is more learning materials learning resources and information available to students today um the it can be get very overwhelming um accessing digital being able to navigate through digital now i know as librarians we will part of our role is to ensure that students are accessing uh, credible information resources and are able to critically evaluate uh, information for its validity and credibility but i also think as teachers and librarians if we can make that simpler because students ultimately want to access the resources get on with the learning do the assignment and move on to the next thing. So if we can make it simple and make it quicker for them, um, that can be helpful. And digital does allow us to do that. That definitely does answer the question. And I think what you said is is important. We're sometimes overwhelmed by the amount of content that we've got, the variety of resources. Yeah. It's really, really I, nice. I, it's, so in, my, in my dialogues with students, one of the one of the most common criticisms is we give them too much. Um, so we actually, as teachers, give them too much. But it's not to say. But then, if if we were, weren't to do that, they would be even more overwhelmed. So we we've got to try and try and get a balance. So we we tend to um, say providing all these resources, and we label what's essential and what's optional if you're really interested. So we do that quite a lot. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I can see somebody raised their hand, but they also wrote a comment. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, uh, so Surendra Sethi, they say, thank you very much, sir, for this amazing and informative session uh, for LIS professionals. And uh, thank you again. So in case um, you want, to, I know this person still has their hand raised in case you want to ask a question, please pop it in the box so we can ask it further. Um, I'd like to proceed with a few more questions that have uh, come through. Uh, so somebody is asking, how do we attract med Medical students to use online resources um, and in this case I think the question is particularly relevant because obviously being something uh, practice based you know there will be tutorials on how to do things there will be videos um, like the ones we have where you, you see a practitioner actually do things but have you got any recommendations to actually draw these students towards the library? So when I saw that question it's it seems like quite a simple question. How do you attract medical students uh, to use online resources? I think that was the question. So you could actually take the word, I think you could take the word medical out and say, how do you attract students to use online resources? Um, but if if it's something between, so let, let, let's situate this. If we've got medical students who are doing kind of clinical practice and placements, um, and then part of the time they're in maybe, I don't know, a more clinical assessment type uh, environments or classroom environments um it's it's how do you i'd say it's how do you work together with the different stakeholders involved in any student's education but i suppose in in medical education it would be um those involved in the clinical side of medical education the pedagogic side and potentially the learning resources side but working together because there is there are there must be so many um, digital teaching and learning resources um, that would benefit and aid uh, medical students, including um, kind of AR and VR resources um, in, a, in an XR environment. But it's not, I would never say it's the librarian's role to, to be exclusively responsible for 
to getting that engagement to happen. That has to be done at a curriculum level. So I'd say the discussions would need to be had with the medical educators, with the academic staff, and with the students themselves. So don't forget that that's been very much the crux of what I've been talking about um, is the students come with some experience of teaching and learning, whether it's from, from school or from college or depending on what level of, of education they're on in the university. So I think that's that's a really key voice to get to, to get in there as well. Thanks for that, Leo. I think you're absolutely right. It is something that has to be a, an effort on two ends, not just librarians, but also at a curriculum level. It's really important to drive that engagement and, and to make the faculty aware that the library offers this possibility of collaborating sometimes as well. Um, somebody actually asked a question that's relevant to what, something you mentioned. Um, they're asking, what about a visual library, something like the metaverse? Do you think we could use this? I, they, they ask a further step towards informatization. Do you do you believe so? Um, so my, my understanding of metaverse, I might break that up into two, is, is the... Um, kind of alternative digital reality that happens that we can we can be involved in so things like second life for example um and there are libraries existing in the metaverse um so that they and is it a further step towards informatization i i think it probably is it's it's another space and place where you can um place resources and enable resources enable students learning enable students engagement my only thing is if you're going to branch out into metaverse um make sure it's aligned so make sure it's not it's you you you've got some control over what's happening in in your in your part of the metaverse so i'm not sure whether that that kind of metaverse is 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 what was meant there um because a visual library to me would be something that's more about digital images, digital video, and creating libraries. In fact, um, you know that's the the business of of, of Jove as well. Um, but all of this, the, there are so many elements. The, these are resources that you have some knowledge, familiarisation with. Um, you also have a voice. You know where they can be used, where they can be best placed to support teaching and learning, to provide a good quality, excellent student experience. Um, so there's no reason why in digital platforms that we can't bring all of these things together. But don't I suppose one of my messages would be don't try and do it by yourself. You've got to involve all the stakeholders, um, which means it's, and that's easier said than done because you're asking people for their time, which as we know, um, when you ask faculty or even students for their time, it's not that easy to come by. But that that, that partnership working to get right um the, your provision, your service, your delivery is really essential. So there needs to be buy-in. So it can be, it can be a, a bit of a push at first but um if you can establish good partnerships with the right people um you can do anything really that is incredibly true actually um the power working together and actually we're receiving a lot of lovely comments from people who are saying that some of the things you discussed like critical friends group uh relationships with student union library survey for, for feedback they're going to oh, use great. immediately because they thought it was really relevant um so i also you know like to share comments like this because okay. i think they um they're pretty um pretty great to have in a session like this um so, we have so, a few sorry, yeah, so, so some of those things and i appreciate you just saw them at a glimpse on a slide but there I mean, you can read about them a bit more in that literature review but they are easy things to put in place um and the little things that can have quite a big impact so Absolutely. And actually, I wanted to share with everybody who's asking maybe more specific questions that we might not have time to answer right now, that Leo has given availability to also, you know, answer any questions uh, in private. So he shared his email address at the beginning of the presentation, but we will share it in the chat box as well in case you want to maybe send some direct questions. Um, so we've got, you know, the possibility to expand this conversation. Um, I would like to end with one question, which actually uh, sparked from what you mentioned during your presentation about the letterbox um, and maybe some love letters, like writing some love letters as well. Um, this actually reminds me of uh, something I experienced when I was at university. So within the library, we had this area where people could uh, drop love letters to other people, anonymous love letters if they wanted to. And that actually drew people into the library because they wanted to participate to this exchange of love letters. 
And one day they put a library edition. So uh, the things you wish you had told me, library edition. So people would actually write letters to the librarians thanking them or suggesting things. So even sometimes just phrasing things in a more creative way, um, it really helps driving engagement, doesn't it? So I wanted to ask you, have you got an example of something creative, something that's happened over your career that you thought was like the example that I had in mind, um, genuinely impressive to drive engagement? Um, I think all the I might struggle to think of anything specific. I can I can think of things that where we've engaged students and we've we've made quite impactful, low budget but high impact changes, and we've used love letters and breakup letters um, to do things like that. But actually, um, so and so that 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 love letters and breakup letters is a standard UX technique, and I've employed that in in focus groups and got students not just to write the letter, but then talk us through it because then you get some discussion about what they love about the library, so things we could do more of, what they dislike about the library, things that we could maybe rethink how we've done. But actually, the to, to answer your question, Alice, one of the one of the most um, impactful initiatives um, I've been part of are things like. Um, putting on events for students in the library space to bring students into the library, but not just not events for the sake of it. So it might be we I've, I've, well, in either one, I've been responsible for the library in which we've run games nights, but the games have been games developed by our games technology or games design students. We've had things like working with the politics department or the history department to put on events for um you know things like black history months um we've also had um art displays in the library from the from the creative arts performances in the library from performing arts so working working in collaboration with faculty again to do something a little bit different that brings that draws students into the library um and they've been they've been good for student engagement the thing is that the important thing is and i'm not saying that i've got the answer to this is don't they mustn't be gimmicky so the, you want them to have a longer lasting impact so it can't be like an event for the sake of it you need to kind of think about it strategically how do you how do you then continue to engage students through that particular activity or event amazing thank you Leah for sharing that and yeah there's loads of amazing initiatives that people can um, initiate and sometimes they you know even a small thing can really change the game because it, it it just has to be trending sometimes people maybe a reel on an Instagram page can change how things go uh, dramatically yeah, so yeah it's really nice to hear some practical examples of how have uh, these things have happened in your experience as I said we've got loads more questions but we're also um, getting to the end of our session so I would like to thank everybody for joining us today it's been absolutely great and we've received great comments great insights again Leo is available to uh, discuss further in case you'd like to send him some specific questions um, but we also will be sending a recording of this session uh, tomorrow so um, please re-watch it reuse it share it with your colleagues anybody who might be interested uh use it as a reference for the future we're always happy to help um so thanks again leo for this great presentation and that's a pleasure thank you for having me and um yeah if you do have any questions outside of this session um that i could help with or advise then please do get in touch i'm quite easily findable you don't have to wait for these slides <laughs> amazing well thanks again everybody and have a great day bye